Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor Door Texan. Today I'm gonna to show you how I make venison breakfast sausage at home. I'm gonna walk y'all through each step of the process as well as point out helpful tips I've learned along the way. So when it's your turn to give us a try, it'll be a cinch. First up, we'll need a meat grinder. I'll be using one of those meat grinder attachments for my KitchenAid stand mixer, but you're welcome to use whatever setup you have at home. Personally, I've had good luck with these and highly recommend them if you already have a stand mixer and are looking for a cost-effective way to start playing around with grinding your own meat or making sausage. I'll make sure to leave a link in the comments below for where you can find this attachment and all the other gear I swear by for home processing. Something important to note right off the bat, keep everything you're working with ice cold. Put the grinder parts in your freezer, make sure the meat and fat you're grinding is semi-frozen, and even freeze the bowl your meat falls into. Why do we keep everything cold? Well, first off, and most importantly, food safety. But secondly, fat melts and melted fat will ruin a grinder. So, keep everything cold. With the meat grinder assembled and frosty cold room sitting in the freezer, let's grind some deer meat. I'm working with one and a half pounds of semi-frozen venison that I set aside when breaking down a doe I shot last season. You can use just about any meat from your deer as long as it was handled and processed correctly, the fat completely removed, and you've taken as much silver skin off as possible. I'm running everything through the coarse grinder plate, which will leave you with a pile of ground meat perfect for forming patties. After the venison, let's introduce some fat. I'm adding one and a half pounds of semi-frozen bacon ends and pieces, which is my favorite go-to fat to use for breakfast sausage. This is essentially offcuts from bacon making that are too fatty to package and sell as regular bacon, but they're perfect for adding fat to a grind. They're available at just about every grocery store out there, right next to your regular bacon. And like this package, some come hardwood smoked, which is an excellent boost to the overall flavor of your breakfast sausage. You may have noticed this already, but it's one and a half pounds of venison and one and a half pounds of bacon pieces, which is a heart healthy 50-50 blend. You're welcome to mess around with other various ratios if you want to try and reduce the fat, but I've found this ratio to be the all around winner for our house, especially when the fat is that oh so tasty bacon. Now that we've ground our meat and blended in some fat, let's add some spices to get this pile tasting like breakfast sausage. Starting out, toss in that main breakfast sausage flavor, two tablespoons of sage. Follow that up with just a kiss of heat by adding one teaspoon of crushed red peppers. Now add two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of fresh ground pepper, two teaspoons of brown sugar, and finally two cloves of minced garlic. And now we're back to the stand mixer. This time we'll be using the paddle attachment to give our sausage a thorough and lengthy blending. And while you watch it mix, add about one to two teaspoons of salt since I forgot to add that earlier with everything else. For those of you without stand mixers who haven't clicked off yet, you can mix this sausage with your hands. It'll take a bit longer and that meat is ice cold so it won't be as fun, but you can certainly get it done without having one of these. After about five to 10 minutes, your sausage should be properly blended. You know it's ready when the meat feels tacky to the touch and a small patty will hang upside down in your hands. You don't wanna go overboard and make a gooey, sticky mess of things, but a little sticky is a good sign that things have mixed well and we're ready to go. Now, before we call it done, don't forget the most important step of all, tasting your sausage before packaging or serving. Now, I'm not saying grab a ball of raw meat and give it a go. Instead, form a tiny patty, cook it up on the pan, and once it hits 160 degrees Fahrenheit, give it a taste test to see if anything's missing. This is your chance to taste test and tweak. Does it need more salt? Does it need to be spicier? Does it need more sage? Make your changes and figure out what works for you. I'm a big proponent of people playing around with recipes, so find out what you like and then let me know in the comments below on how you made it your own. For me, this recipe is exactly how I like it. That'll do it for this one and thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or tips of your own to add, please feel free to leave a comment below. I always try to make myself available to my viewers and I'll be happy to tackle whatever comments pop up. Now, if you're new to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you considered hitting that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, it certainly helps keep me going, and you'll have access to countless recipes with more great content to come. Alright y'all, take care.